Hi, it's Ramesha here with Vocal Bliss. Today, I would like to talk about how to hold a note steadily without the voice breaking or wobbling. But before we dive into this, as always, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to my channel and so that you won't miss any of the future videos I put out. Being able to hold a note steadily without break or without wobbling is definitely a desirable thing to learn because when we sing songs we often have to hold long notes and oftentimes holding a long note especially when singing uh, softer but not only can be a little bit challenging and so to be able to do it in a way that it sounds really nice and even and completely um, consistent is something that is very uh, desirable and it really can make a big difference in the way you express especially feelings in a song. In this video I'm going to talk about which steps we need to take in order to learn to do this well. There are three main things that are required in order to be able to hold a note steadily. Number one is good breath support. Number two is good vocal placement. And number three, the ability to sing without tension in your throat. And I'm going to cover each one of these and I'm going to give you uh, some tool, some exercise that you can do to get, at least get you started in developing these three features in your singing. In order to develop good breath support, one of the most important things you can do is to get into the habit and develop the habit of breathing more diaphragmatically. And I'm not talking just when you're singing, I'm talking also just in general. Uh, in your everyday life because so many of us are used to breathing only using our upper chest and basically our diaphragm is like paralyzed there's just no activity happened in the diaphragm when we breathe and so when we sing breathing diaphragmatically is absolutely essential when we breathe normally that's not technically essential, but it would be very, very good for your overall health. And also, it really helps to keep your stress levels down. There's a lot of research out there about diaphragmatic breathing and the ability that it has to help us stay calm, especially in emergency situations. So this is a little bit beyond what we're talking about here, but you can look that up and see how important that is. So if you learn to breathe diaphragmatically, it will not just help your singing, it will also help you in many other ways that are actually pretty uh, important ways. In order to breathe diaphragmatically, what you need to do is when you take a breath, inflate your belly, your abdomen, so your belly will probably protrude a little bit, it will just come out a little bit like that, inflate like a balloon. And then when you exhale, you do the opposite. So the belly deflates and your belly moves towards your uh, spine, basically. Okay, so this is diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale, inflate, exhale, deflate. Now, when it comes to singing, though, what you need to do is more engage your belly muscles. So you inhale and you inflate the belly and then your belly muscles stay well engaged in a way uh, similar to when you're going to the bathroom, but not exactly. But that's the idea. So when you're singing, those muscles act as bellows, you know, in order to pump the air up through your vocal cords and also in order to keep a steady flow of air, a steady air pressure, which allows your vocal cords to function at their best and produce a sound that is full and consistent. So that's the foundation. So if you want to practice this kind of breathing for singing, so inhale, inflate the belly, and then exhale through your mouth, 
and you can really feel the pressure of your belly pushing the air out by exhaling and bringing the tummy back towards your spine okay so this is something that you can do not just when singing in fact it would be better to practice it while you're not singing because when you're singing you're probably focusing on other things and so you might it might be too much to focus on at one time but you can practice this separately and develop these muscles and then when it's time to sing you you can put your attention there and you'll see how much more your sound will be consistent and full just because of supporting the breath from your belly vocal placement cannot be learned in just a few minutes unfortunately but it's the result of practice and of practicing in a certain way but I want to at least share with you a few points and a very simple exercise that at least will get you started on the path of developing good placement. Good placement means that you have learned from your own experience of practicing voice where exactly you're placing, and this is why it's called placement, where exactly you're putting the voice in your throat. Every note you sing has a slightly different place in the throat. You notice when you sing a low notes the voice is placed in a certain way but when you go up the scale gradually the voice changes its position and this is something that you become aware of as you practice. So it takes some time. It takes some time because it also involves developing a certain sensitivity in your throat muscles that you may not have when you start training your voice. But in order to learn good placement, one of the most important things is learning how to pronounce your vowels very clearly so that as you start a sound, the sound is as full and strong as it can be, but without strain. Okay, so the fullness comes from clear enunciation and not from pushing or straining or forcing the tone out. So here's a simple exercise that you can do. Start in the low range where it's easy for you to sing and then enunciate, focus on enunciating clearly the vowel and then holding it like this. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, and make sure it's really, really full and not just uh, uh, but really uh, and then you go up a step uh, 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 and you can change vowel, you can do eh, 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 e, e, e and try to really enunciate clearly. In the beginning, the notes may still not be as full as you want them, but as you practice, the throat muscles will get stronger and they will become more and more efficient in the way they work to help you produce a full sound. So don't expect to be full right off the bat as you try this exercise, but as you do it more, the muscles will learn what to do and then gradually your vocal cords will close tightly and produce a full sound. So try this exercise, go up one half step at a time, you can use a keyboard to do that, and go up and change between different vowels, E, A, A, O, U, try them all because as you will notice if you haven't yet, each vowel feels a little bit different in the throat, especially E and U are the, the ones that are the, the most different from the other vowels. So you need to get used to working with each one of these vowels so that when you sing a song and you say a lot of words, you're able to negotiate any sound that the word requires for you to produce. And the third one, singing with relaxation, this is also something that requires some time to develop and especially because most untrained singers tend to have 
a, a, a lot of habit of tension. So when we are not trained vocally, pretty much all of us, 99% of untrained singers, sing with some kind of tension whether because that's the only way they can produce a sound, whether because they're uh, subconsciously or consciously imitating somebody else, some singer they like, or for whatever reason, but there's usually tension. We're usually doing more than what is needed to sing. And so being able to get rid of tension is very, very important. And until this has happened, there's always the possibility for your sound to break or wobble just because there's tension. So when there's tension, the sound is never really reliable and it can break depending on the note you sing or maybe because you just don't know how to place it. You just don't know how to relax in your placed sound. And so, and so this is the reason why it can easily wobble. So one of the best things that you can do to get rid of tension in the sound is just holding a steady note and as you hold it, consciously relax the throat. It, it's hard to relax the throat because when we're singing, we're doing so many other things. We're saying words, we're singing different notes, we're, you know, there's a lot happening. So focus on one note at a time and hold it. And during the time you hold it, you have more time and bandwidth to think about relaxing the throat. So, uh, as you relax the, the throat, you will notice that the sound tends to become a little bit deeper and richer and maybe even louder without you trying just because you are relaxing and allowing more resonance to come in. So that's a very good thing. But remember, when you start the sound, enunciate the vowel so that when you start, the sound is already full. So the other exercise that we just did where we're enunciating the vowels should come first because you can't really relax until there's some kind of of placement in place. If the voice is not placed and it's not full and you try to relax the throat, probably the sound will fall apart. So you first work on making the, the sound full. And then when it's full, then you can relax. So if you, if you think that your sound is not very full and you think that it's a little bit breathy and you have a hard time producing a, a decent sound, so focus only on the exercise we did earlier and e e e or a uh, a uh, a uh, and holding for a little while maybe a week or two and then as your voice develops and it becomes fuller then you can also start practicing this last exercise which is holding the sound full sound and then relaxing the throat so uh, a steady sound that doesn't wobble and doesn't break is the result of all these three things in place. There are other minor things, but these are the most important things. So breath support, full sound, good placement for the sound, and relaxation. And this is how you work on them individually, separately, but then gradually, as you become more proficient in each one of them, you'll see that you have to be able to do all of them at the same time and you will be able to. Don't try to do all of it in the beginning maybe because it's a little bit overwhelming but work on one specific thing at a time and then you'll see that gradually your sound will become more reliable. So I'm really curious to hear your comments on this. I want you to go and try these exercises and see how they work for you. Um, be patient as always you know um, people tend to want immediate results and that unfortunately doesn't always happen in fact rarely to be honest um, I, I have to be honest with you there you know I learned to sing and sometimes people say oh you have quite a gift well maybe but I know that that was the result of hard work 
especially and it's just you know one may be born with a beautiful voice but you still had to put in the work some people are just able to sing wonderfully from the very beginning i was not one of them i had to really work hard so don't feel bad if results don't come immediately but just stick with it do it a little bit and then try more and try more and then you'll see that gradually these things will develop thank you so much for watching this video i hope you found it helpful and if you did please consider giving it thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for future videos thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye bye